North Atlantic night, the wind cuts like a blade through tarred wood and frozen rope. Every breath turns white before it even leaves their lips. You can almost hear it, the creak of ice, the whisper of sails stiff with frost. No fire, no smoke, only the sound of bones and wind. Their ships, the Oseberg and the Gokstad, carried warriors across seas that could kill in minutes. Fire was death tar, and pitch would turn a spark into a funeral. So they learned another way. They built warmth without flame. Discipline became their shelter. Remember this, the cold didn't break them. It shaped them. It taught them control, not comfort. Because in that silence, they found something stronger than fire. Still warmth. The deck was alive with danger. Each plank sealed with tar and pine pitch, perfect for keeping water out and perfect for catching fire. One spark could leap from a lantern, a cooking flame, even a stray ember from a pipe. And four minutes later, the whole ship would be an inferno. Four minutes. That's all it took for a Viking longship to burn down to its ribs. They knew it. They feared it. They planned around it. You can almost hear their decision in the wind. No torches, no stoves, no open flame. Every source of heat was banned. The Oseberg, the Gokstad, the Skuldalev ships, each one a floating rulebook of discipline and restraint. They built their lives on wood that could kill them. So they learned control, control of flame, control of comfort, control of themselves. It wasn't weakness, it was wisdom. By cutting out fire, they removed the enemy that hides in every ember. They understood that safety is its own kind of warmth. Remember, this fire meant death. Cold meant life. That's the opposite of what we believe, but that's how they survived. When modern sailors imagine Viking voyages, they picture roaring hearths under the stars. But the truth was silence, cold, breath, hands gripping oars slick with frost. And still, no one died from fire. Every ship that stayed cold came home because they chose cold to stay alive. They chose cold to live. Archaeologists found it strange. The great Viking ships Oseberg, Gokstad, Skuldalev were perfect time capsules preserved beneath clay and peat for a thousand years. But when they were uncovered, there was something missing. No fire pits, no ash, no soot. Just clean planks sealed tight with tar and discipline. In every other ancient vessel, Greek, Roman, even early English galleys, you find traces of heat, cracked tiles from small hearths, iron braziers for cooking black stains where smoke once curled. But on these northern ships, nothing, only silence. The absence spoke louder than evidence itself. It meant the Vikings had made a choice. A deliberate silence against the roar of fire. They valued control more than comfort, survival more than warmth. You can almost see it a crew huddled under frozen sails, every man breathing carefully, every movement watched. They knew that one careless spark could end not one life, but 50. So they erased fire from their world completely. Oseberg's oak boards are still pale untouched by smoke even after 10 centuries. Gokstad's ribs show no burn marks, no scorched edges. And the Skuldalev wrecks pulled from the Danish mud are clean as if they had sailed through ice, not flame. To a modern eye that seems impossible. No warmth, no cooking. But to them, the silence of fire was proof of mastery. They had learned the hardest lesson of the North, that sometimes survival isn't about what you add, but what you take away. Remember, this fire was death, cold was discipline, and silence was wisdom. Silence of fire, proof of wisdom. They didn't heat the ship, they heated themselves. Every man wrapped in three layers of wool, soft inside, coarse outside, then sealed with animal skin cloaks that trapped every breath of warmth. Their sleeves weren't tied, not buttoned. They were sewn shut. Wool pulled moisture away, fur locked air in. It was physics, not comfort. A body became its own hearth. At night, two men shared one sealskin sleeping bag. Breath mixing condensation freezing on the outside, but staying warm inside. 
They took turns on watch, keeping rhythm with the sea and each other. Above them, the great sail dropped down like a blanket, catching heat from 50 living bodies and holding it beneath the frozen air. Archaeologists found traces of this method on the Oseberg and Skuldelev ships, folded sails stained with animal oil fragments of wool pressed against the planks. Even without fire, the temperature inside could rise nearly 10 degrees. A human-made microclimate built from nothing but fabric discipline and breath. You can almost feel it, the quiet sound of breathing under canvas, the pulse of life held close while the world outside froze. They weren't fighting the cold. They were managing it, layer by layer, breath by breath. Remember this, they didn't trap heat with fire. They trapped it with understanding. No sparks, no smoke, only knowledge, no flame still warmth. They moved as one body, rowed by daylight, pulled ashore by dusk. The Vikings planned their voyages around the light itself. Short winter days meant shorter sails closer to land, always within reach of safety. When the sun dropped behind the horizon, they hauled the ships onto frozen sand and built small fires only on shore, never on deck. The Oseberg and Gokstad crews likely did the same. Archaeologists found blackened stones near old harbors, proof that warmth waited only when their feet touched earth. Meals were cold, spirits were not. They sang, they told stories, they shared dried fish and mead under sails stiff with frost. Laughter echoed against the hull like waves. You can almost hear it now, the rhythm of oars, the hum of Old Norse versus the sound of trust in every breath. Each man's strength depended on the one beside him. They worked, at froze, and endured together. This was their true fire unity, warmth that came not from flame, but from fellowship. They didn't just survive the North, they moved through it as one living machine, guided by rhythm loyalty and will. Warmth came from voices, from trust, from knowing the man beside you would not falter. In that world of ice and silence, this bond was their shelter. Their strength wasn't in muscle, it was in connection. Remember this, a single flame could burn a ship, but a chorus of voices could keep it alive. Warmth came from voices. Other navies built kitchens on deck, the Vikings built speed. Across the warm waters of the Mediterranean, Roman and Greek galleys carried clay ovens and small braziers for cooking. They sailed heavy slow, their decks stained black with smoke. Heat meant comfort, but it also meant weight and risk. The Vikings knew better. Their ships were colder, lighter, faster. No heavy ovens, no smoke to reveal their position on the horizon. Only silence and precision. You can almost see it from above Roman ships lumbering across blue water while Viking longships cut through the gray sea like blades. They didn't chase warmth, they chased victory. When wind dropped, they rode in rhythm, every stroke burning calories instead of wood. When storms hit, they rode low and flexible, not top heavy with clay or iron. A fleet built not for comfort, but for control. Hasseberg and Gokstad show this design clearly shallow draft sleek hulls and no space wasted on hearths or chimneys. Every inch of wood served speed. Every ounce of weight meant danger. It wasn't ignorance, it was engineering. They understood the equation, the colder the ship, the faster the strike. While others fed fire, the Vikings fed momentum. Their cold ships outran the warm ones. Their silence carried further than any sail of smoke. They traded comfort for control and they won. And maybe that's the real lesson buried in their timbers. Sometimes warmth slows you down. Sometimes the smartest way to survive is to stay cold. They traded comfort for control and they won. In 2007, the Sea Stallion from Glendalow set sail across the North Sea, a full-scale reconstruction of a Viking longship built nail for nail plank for plank, following every scar and curve of the ancient design. No fire aboard, just wool discipline and breath. The crew, modern sailors from Ireland and Denmark, believed they understood hardship. They had trained for wind, for waves, for exhaustion, but not for this. The cold pierced everything. It crept through the hull, through the seams of their gloves, through bone. At first they froze, 
Their hands stiffened, their breath turned to frost on the inside of the sail. Some whispered that the old Norse way was impossible, that no one could cross an ocean without heat. Then something changed. They stopped fighting the cold and started cooperating with it. They adapted. They sealed their sleeves. They added layers of wool until movement felt like armor. They slept pressed close shoulder to shoulder, the sail lowered to form a roof of ice-stiffened canvas. Inside that fragile shelter, the air became eight degrees warmer than the sea around them. Eight degrees, just enough to turn misery into endurance, enough to make survival possible. They learned to breathe together, to move together, to trust the rhythm of the sea and of one another. No fire was needed, only knowledge, only unity. When archaeologists later measured the microclimate below deck, the data matched the old theories drawn from the Oseberg and Skuldalev wrecks the same warmth trapped by fabric, by body heat, by discipline. The same silence that once echoed across frozen fjords. You can almost see their realization etched in frost. It wasn't magic. It was design. It was wisdom forged from a thousand winters and carried forward by human hands. And when the sea stallion finally reached its harbor, cold exhausted but intact, every sailor stepped onto land with the same look the Vikings must have worn a millennium ago. A quiet pride, born not of defiance, but of understanding. They had touched the past, they had lived its truth, and they learned what the Vikings already knew. They learned what the Vikings already knew. They didn't fight the cold, they organized it. They mastered it. Every breath became part of a system, measured, controlled, shared. Each silence held purpose. Each movement carried weight. They didn't see the cold as an enemy, but as a teacher, relentless, patient fare. In the frozen air above the Oseberg and Gokstad ships, the temperature often dropped below freezing. Yet below those decks, men slept, ate, and planned a live, unbroken focus. Their survival wasn't luck. It was design. A living experiment in coordination and restraint. They mastered it, controlled it, trusted each other. You can almost picture it 50 men breathing in rhythm beneath a frozen sail. Each exhale a small cloud, each heartbeat part of a larger machine. While the modern world sees warmth as comfort, they saw it as precision. They learned to work with the cold, not against it. The air that froze their beards was the same air that sharpened their minds. That's why their ships endured the storms. That's why their people crossed oceans others feared. No wasted motion, no excess, just balance. And maybe that's the difference between them and us. When we're cold, we reach for a switch, a dial, a wall of heat that separates us from nature. When they were cold, they turned toward each other, closing the distance between men, not between man and flame. They didn't need fire to stay alive. They had something far stronger understanding. Their warmth wasn't a flicker of light, but a network of trust. Their strength came not from conquering nature, but from moving in harmony with it. The Vikings didn't burn brighter because of fire. They burned brighter because of knowledge. So remember this, they didn't win against the cold. They learned from it. And in that learning, they found the kind of warmth that never fades. Knowledge burned brighter. Imagine it a ship drifting through fog, no flame, no smoke, only breath. The world around it is silent, frozen, endless. And yet inside, that silence life. 50 hearts beating beneath a sail of ice. The Oseberg and Gokstad ships once moved like this, cutting through black water under gray skies. Their crews wrapped in wool and trust. They didn't warm the sea, they warmed each other. Every whisper, Every shared breath, every steady motion kept them alive. No firelight guided them through the cold, only knowledge passed hand to hand, generation to generation. You can almost hear it if you listen close. The creak of wood, the rhythm of oars, the quiet power of discipline. No shouting, no panic, just control. In a world obsessed with fire, they chose understanding. They proved that warmth doesn't have to burn. That survival isn't about conquering nature, but about knowing it deeply enough to live within it. Remember this, the Vikings didn't fear the cold. They mastered it. They turned silence into strength and breath into survival. Ancient heat wasn't fire, it was wisdom. 